Well, um, yesterday there are still uh, quite a large number of people coming out to um, to protest. So, um, although you know this um, promulgation of this subtle promulgation of this national security security law looked um, alarming or even scary to some people, but I think many young people and many um, you know people holding strong view against it would not be scared from coming out. So there would be, I think ongoing um, protest in the times to come. And I guess there is this sense of urgency because this law is expected to be approved by the end of the month and could be in Hong Kong's books as soon as uh, the end of June. Well, according to what I understand, probably um, the details will come out in July or August. Um, but I, uh, we, we have not yet been consulted. So um, we have yet to wait to see uh, to see what the detailed provisions are. Uh, at present, there is not yet any timetable published. How hopeful are you that you can prevent this from being written into law? I think it's hardly um, uh, we can hardly expect that we'll be able to resist, you know, uh, this um, announced policy uh, uh, policy from being put into place. So probably. Uh, the law will be promulgated. But of course, as to how tight uh, would the control be, how could uh, draconian will the measures be, that is yet um, we have to wait and see. And of course, you know, much would depend on international pressure as well as local um, uh, voices of the uh, um, um, protest. Um, it would make a lot of difference if there are, you know, a lot of details, you know, confining the exercising of the power. Uh, in particular, you know, people are, are very con concerned to see whether, you know, there are executive arms of this National Security Office to be set up in Hong Kong and whether or not this um, offences proposed to be uh, um, 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 legislated will be tried in Hong Kong court. So all this, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the devils are in the, uh, are in the details. We have yet to say, uh, to, to see, but of course, you know, the, the fact that the uh, central government has seen fit to promulgate this law, you know, uh, for Hong Kong is bad enough because obviously it's a blatant violation of the basic law, which stipulates that all this national security law should be made by Hong Kong Legislative Council on its own. So it's a violation of this clear provision uh, Article 23 of the Basic Law. You mentioned that international pressure would help your cause. Are you satisfied with the response from overseas that you've seen so far? Uh, frankly speaking, I'm a bit disappointed. You know, I think, you know, there should be louder voices. There should be more determination, you know, shown by the, um, by the joint statement of the various governments uh, saying, you know, no to Beijing. But I hope that, um, you know, in the times to come, you know, there will, will be more opportunities for the foreign governments to speak up uh, to Beijing. We all know that Hong Kong is an international city. There are a lot of, you know, international investment in Hong Kong and that, you know, um, international confidence are the necessary condition to enable Hong Kong to maintain its prosperity and stability. Well, Taiwan has offered assistance. What help might you be seeking from President Tsai Ing-wen? Well, uh, their concern and support is, of course, um, valuable. Uh, in fact, um, uh, we have been trying to maintain you know, contact with uh, our sympathizers in mm. Taiwan. But of course, you know, um, um, Beijing, uh, I think they have already given hope uh, of uh, trying to persuade to persuade Taiwan to accept the one country, two systems uh, proposal. So, so I, I, I don't think, you know, um, that uh, Taiwan would be a factor uh, Beijing would take into account when, try, uh, when making a decision to promulgate this national security law for Hong Kong. Well, the UK could possibly offer right of abode to Hong Kongers who possess British national passports, but this is not necessarily sure. the outcome I would imagine you'd want Hong Kongers fleeing Well, I think the British government certainly owe an obligation um, to many Hong Kong people, especially those uh, who are Hong Kong, um, uh, you know, British, uh, 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 British Hong Kong uh, citizens at a time of the handover. 
So um, I think by, by uh, granting right of vote to many uh, local residents of Hong Kong uh, would not, you know, um, 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 uh, uh, would not amount to asking them to flee Hong Kong. Instead, it would give them confidence to stay behind and support, you know, um, 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 our continued campaign uh, for freedom and democracy in Hong Kong. Interesting viewpoint. Albert, what protests are planned for the coming days and how are they being carried out amid COVID-19 restrictions? Are measures still in place there? Uh, yes, still in place. Uh, it has been relaxed a little bit from, you know, restricting the size of the group, you know, from four to eight. And so, you know, on, uh, in, on uh, the coming June 4th, we have to uh, together in small groups, you know, in public places. By, by holding candles and uh, mobile phone with uh, with light on, and then we hopefully we can connect, you know, uh, you know by by uh, you know, cyber connect connected for this. But anyway, you know, uh, we will continue to to fight. We will continue to do our best. Albert Ho, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.